Summer is a great time for having fun in the pool, but if your dogs are making it difficult or even dangerous for your guests, then you may find your relaxing time in the sun is over before it's begun. My name's Maddie, my partner's name's Robin, and I have a nine-year-old daughter named Connor. We have three dogs, Guinness, who's five, Justice, who's nine, and Jovi's 12. Before she begins training, Victoria will spend the day observing the issues for herself. It's summertime and the pool is huge for us. We can't really have people over, we can't have parties over. It's frustrating, it, it really is. Guinness has probably hurt a half a dozen people in the pool. It's easier not to have anybody over. We're hoping Victoria can give us our yard back, our summer, our fun, our parties. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Robin. Nice hey. to meet you. Nice to meet you, Victoria. Come on in. Hey. Hello, dogs. Wow. They won't come all the way to the door. There's a static mat, and that keeps them from charging the door. Well, this? This is uh, a static mat. Seriously? Yes. Yes, it just gives them a little 9-volt shock. And that way, we don't have to worry about them running at the mailman or oh okay running out the door when friends come in so if i touch this now yes so it's like aye static mat is not a great idea it can cause a lot of psychological damage as well as being extremely aye. painful that's so sad that you have to have your dogs in fear or electrocute them ow <laughs> is that on low or high that's on low that was low? Yeah. Wow. If I felt that electric shock that badly and, and that was on low, goodness knows what it feels like to the paws of a dog. It does its job. For the most part, it keeps them from running out the door. As the years have gone on, they know how to work the mat. They know if they jump over it, they're OK. Although they won't come back in the house, they'll, they'll run out. The static mat isn't even working 100%. To demonstrate, Robin brings the dogs around the front door. Jovi, come on. While Jovi has learned to jump over the mat, Guinness and Justice hold their ground. Hey, you guys want to come in? Justice, yes, she will, but they won't. The dogs will not come through the front door at all. You can have a leash on them, try to pull them in, they will not come in. So when we walk the dogs, we take them out the side gate. Come on. Come in. Come on, guys. Smart dogs. It was really sad to watch. Sometimes they'll leap over the mat to get out, so it's not that effective, really. But the, they didn't want to come back into the house. They were scared. Back inside, Victoria hears about the couple's other issues with their oldest dog, Jovi. And there's the Berkey. Jovi. So does that annoy you? Does that irritate you? To no end. Yes. No. Jovi needs to go away. Jovi is the, definitely the one dog in our household that puts a strain on Maddie and I's relationship. Jovi's the biggest irritant in my life. Jovi can't be trusted. She'll snap at neighbors. She'll snap at the kids. Connor won't even walk by her. Connor walks through the kitchen and around and down the hallway to go to her room. Did she bite you? Yeah. Hmm. The dog needs to go. No. Oh, so wait a second, you're saying Jovi needs to be rehomed. Jovi can't be rehomed. Jovi is a big source of contention between Robin and Maddie. But I don't think Jovi would be better off with anybody. She's too old to be rehomed. She needs to stay with the family. Sorry, I don't want to be insulting, but I have to say they're rather large. He's bloated right now. It's one of our issues with him. Guinness has health issues, and he has several. He's allergic to everything. He bloats, and he has a bad hip that needs to be replaced. Um, she got to witness firsthand Guinness's bloat. And it sounds like a hollow drum. That's how we know that he's bloated. It sounds like a hollow drum. Ooh. And he'll lay there, and he'll let you burp him. I burped a child, but never a dog before. <laughs> when I felt his stomach, it was like a drum. That dog is not a healthy dog. Come here, JJ. Oh, JJ, here, JJ. look at Ruddy. Justice. Hi. How old is she? She's about nine. She was a rescue. She's perfect. Justice is a very sweet dog, but she's overweight. And in fact, all the dogs are overweight. Out front, 
Maddie and Robin want to show Victoria one of the major problems they are having with Guinness. Guinness can be horrible on a walk. He pulls, and if we see another dog, he will jump four feet straight up in the air. Come on, come on, keep going, come on. Ouch, keep going. He bites at his leash, and now and then my hands are there. Keep going, Bobos. Good boy, good boy. He's not being aggressive. He just gets so excited that he starts grabbing the leash. And if he can't grab the leash, then he grabs Maddie's clothes. So has he greeted other dogs before on the leash? No, because I don't trust them. Right. <laughs> oh, boy, we're going to greet okay. a dog. If there's another dog walking towards us, what would you do? Um, they would usually cross. They would cross. What if they don't cross, though? What if they don't know? I don't know. We're going to see. So left or right? <laughs> Maddie doesn't have too much control over Guinness. He didn't react that badly towards the dog this time, but he's a big dog. And if he wanted to, there is no way Maddie could stop him. Keep on, Bobos. Good boy. This is a great pool. We really need to get Guinness's behavior around the pool in check. It's dangerous for the kids, it's dangerous for our friends, and it's very dangerous for him. All right, I want to see how he goes. <laughs> When Guinness jumps into the pool, he lands pretty hard. And this is not good for his hips. In fact, Maddie's been told by her veterinarian that he shouldn't be jumping into the pool. Whoa. He's trying to save her. Are we swimming over her? He's, she's trying to get away. Okay. Guinness is a 120-pound Labrador. He is very, very heavy. It's one thing for adults to be swimming around, but quite another thing for kids to be swimming around with him, and I actually think it's incredibly dangerous. I can see already on your back there are scratches. Can you? Yep, and on your shoulders and on your back. Oh, yeah. Ay, yay, yay. Look at that. My back is totally scratched. My legs are scratched. Arms, bruises everywhere, just from Guinness trying to hop on you. See, he's trying to find her. That looks like it's going to hurt. The fact is, though, once he gets in, he seems to get a little bit panicky. And I think that's the reason why he's trying to hold on to people. So if you could take him out and put him outside then. OK. Take Guinness is bad news around the pool. Um, if he's in the pool, he's going to hurt somebody. And if he's out of the pool behind the fence, then he continuously barks. <laughs> with Guinness barking and with Jovi barking at the fence, it, it's definitely not peaceful. So it's, it's not a relaxing time in our backyard. There's really serious problems here. With all the dog's various health issues, with the pool, with Jovi potentially biting people, with the static mat, with the walking outside, there's a lot of things that need to be addressed. To begin, Victoria wants to make sure all the training from now on is cruelty free. I would like to address the whole static mat issue. OK. And I'd like to teach the dogs not to go out of the door when the door's open. That would be wonderful. Without the static mat. We've had the static mat for so long, and that's what we relied on. So when Victoria said she was going to take it away, I think I was a little hesitant, because I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I'm going to show these dogs that I'm removing the mat. This thing is going in the trash, puppies, OK? This is going to be the line. They do not cross when I'm here at the door. I wanted to draw a line for the dogs, and that was the threshold. That's where the dogs cannot pass. And any time the dog passes, all I do is go up to the dog and body block. I'm just basically claiming the space with my body. You know, as you walk into a dog, the dog walks back. Yes. And using a hand signal, your body is strong, you're direct, using eye contact, and you don't allow the dogs to fail. Do you know what right. I mean? Because as soon as they cross the line, you're right there. 
I like to use a vocal command too, as well as a hand signal, so I'm going to say wait. I introduce the wait command. It shows the dogs you have to wait behind the threshold. You can't come any further. Wait. Justice can go off. That wait up, up. Good. Rewards are motivators. So there's good consequences for what they just did. Good. Next, Victoria has Maddie take over while she knocks on the door. Wait. Wait. I was a little apprehensive, and I didn't think we would be able to keep the dogs from going out the door with it open. Wait. Go push it back the line. That's it. Wait. Good. I'm just so excited about how quickly they're picking it up. Good doggy. Lovely. Good dog. Very good, Maddie. Fabulous. All right, I'm going to go out again. Okay. Take it away, Robin. Hi. Wait. 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 The way the training went was amazing. Um, didn't expect it to happen so fast. It did. The dogs responded really well. I don't think we'll ever have to take the mat out again. OK, good baby. Good baby. Good. Good. With the static mat gone for good, Victoria wants to reassure the dogs that it is now safe to come through the front door. For approximately four years, both Justice and Guinness have not walked back into the house through the front door because they've been too scared because of the static mat. I therefore wanted to work with Justice and Guinness to condition them to see that the front door actually was a good place and not a scary or painful place. So what I want to see is if I can coax the dogs back through the door. OK. And I think what we'd start is I'm, I'm going to open this door here. OK. Like this. And then we can just sort of sit down. So, Matt, do you mind just sitting down on here? The reason why I got them to sit down was so that they were at the dog's level and the dogs would get trust and comfort from them. They're comfortable here, and we have to make this, again, a comfortable place to be. OK. When Victoria first brought us to the front, I thought, this is going to take forever. There is no way. Now, I just want you to give them a few treats, because as you can see, he's pulling away from it. He still doesn't feel comfortable. Right. But let's see if we can have Justice come in along. Hey. Guinness. Guinness. Guinness, come. What's that? Almost got it. Gradually, I got Maddie and Robin to move back, seated, to encourage the dogs to come with them. Hey, Jay. Good boy. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Justice. Come on, Justice. Come on. Good girl, JJ. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy that it worked the way it did, and it just happened so quickly. Come on, Jay. Come on. Oh, good girl. Yay. Yes. If this dog lunges, I'm going down. Yep. Because he weighs as much as I do, and all that power at the other end of the leash will pull me over. Good boy. Whenever he pulled me, I stopped. He's a sensitive dog, so as soon as I stopped, he turns his head to find out what's going on. As soon as he relaxed on the leash, I carried on. And in that way, I was able to walk him really well with a loose leash. I've got a dog walker over there on the other side of the street, and I want to see if, that if I can just get his attention. Now, anything could happen. I'm concerned for your safety. Are you? <laughs> I am. Maybe I'm a little concerned, too. <laughs> OK. So what I do is I always sort of see there's another dog coming, as there is now. What I do is put my body in front. As soon as Guinness saw the dog, he started to become excited. Good boy. And then when I knew that I had him under control, I just told him to wait. He watched the other dog go past, no problem. No biting at the leash and no lunging. It was okay. amazing, especially with your size. And the leash was loose the whole time. I'm just absolutely stunned. 
Could you do this now, Maddie? I'll give it a go. There you go. Go for it. I was a little apprehensive and concerned that I wouldn't be able to block Guinness properly. He goes so crazy when we encounter another dog. Gonna stay. Don't, don't, don't be tense. That's it. Good, nice loose leash. Beauty. Good boy, Guinness. Good boy. Wow. Maddie. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think they were really surprised about how actually calm and well-behaved he was being. Does this feel good, Robin? Yeah, yeah, it feels good. Because he's not pulling us down the street. No. It's been so difficult to walk Guinness and so taxing on our bodies, and Victoria's techniques are so easy to use. So I want to teach Guinness, if he barks, game stops. It's known as the removal technique, and it's basically one strike and you're out. To begin with, I had the kids get into the pool. Maddie and Robin were sitting by the pool and the kids played with a red ball. <laughs> Up. Let's go. Any time that Guinness barked, I put a slip leash over him and took him inside. I waited inside for a couple of seconds, and then I brought him out again. It'll never work. I'm still apprehensive in <laughs> Victoria's removal training as to whether it's really going to work. We have so many noises and other neighbor dogs barking. I don't think we'll ever get our dogs to stop barking. Up. Up. Let's go. After just two more tries, Guinness is catching on. Quiet. Good. All right, Robin, I'd like you to take over from me. With Robin on his side, Guinness again gets excited. But after just one more trip inside, he gets the idea. It's Me or the Dog presents Cool Tips for Hot Dogs. Summer is the perfect time to enjoy swimming with your dog. The best way to get a fearful dog acclimated to the pool is to A. Gently place your dog in the water and see if he can paddle. B. Toss a ball or favorite toy into the pool to entice him. Or C. Start on a step and coax your dog further in with treats or a toy. The answer is C. Some dogs love the water and will jump right in. But other dogs may be fearful and need more coaxing. Respect your dog's feelings and always take things slowly. This is Leslie Gallagher. She's a canine re rehabilitation practitioner. Hi. Hi, I'm Robin. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. And Maddie. Hi, and nice here's to meet Connor. you. Hi, Connor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Before Leslie came, she had spoken to Guinness's veterinarian and got a lot of information about him. And then she was able to get more information by talking to Robin and Maddie. OK, do we know how much he weighs? 108. 108? He does need to lose a little bit of weight. One pound of fat for a dog is the equivalent to about five pounds for us. So even if he were 30 pounds overweight, that's like you or I having to lose 150 pounds. It's a massive amount for a dog. And what happens when you get a dog who's got clearly quite a bit of um, of arthritic problems, you want to reduce the load off of his joints as much as you possibly can. So literally every pound that you can get off him is going to make him feel better and he'll live a lot longer. What has also happened is he has a partial ACL tear. You're aware of that. Do you know when he tore out his knee? He did it running around the pool, jumping in. OK, so sliding on the cement. But he's also got a disc at L4 and L5 in his back. Are you aware of that? No. No. Okay. I was really sad that there were more issues. I'm thinking that everything is really, really bad at this point. Now, Leslie begins her physical evaluation of Guinness. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of measurements. OK, so he's 2 inches different. He's 21 inches on this side and 19 inches on that side. The problem with that is he's putting so much weight on his right leg because he's trying to not use that leg that he's going to tear out this leg. After evaluating Guinness, what I have found today is that his injuries are consistent with a really severe hip dysplasia and a terrible ACL tear. So he's got some poor orthopedic problems. So I want Leslie to be able to show you how we can do some swimming with Guinness in a positive way rather than a negative way. So if we can get into the pool, mm -hmm. that would be Great. fabulous. Be OK, let's go then. Come on, Guinness. You need help? Such a good boy. Any swimming that needs to be done has to be done in a calm manner. And definitely no jumping in the pool. In order for Guinness not to panic in the water, Leslie and I put a float jacket on him so that he'd feel much safer and he could swim calmly. All right, come on, sweetheart. We're going to go in really slowly and really politely, right? Good boy. 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 Good boy.
table. So what I want you guys to do when you're walking him in, which we'll practice, is holding onto both ends of the of the float coat. What okay. a good boy! Oh my gosh! And I just want to support him. See his leg? He's not even. He's not even kicking not even it. Thin. See how he's not even kicking he's that not leg? Even no. Oh, you poor baby. He's not even using his back legs to swim. His hips are so bad that he can't even use them to keep him afloat. So it's obviously gotten much worse it's and gotten, I haven't yeah. noticed. You don't until somebody you're observing from afar. Right. Maddie thought that Guinness was trying to save people in the pool by swimming up to them, clawing at them. But he was, and I think he was just panicking. There's a lot that they can do with this absolutely. swimming, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. He can, we can definitely make this dog a lot better with okay. physical therapy and, and diet and exercise, absolutely. What I would most recommend for him is daily sessions in the pool to build up his cardio fitness, to build up some of his muscle atrophy so he's not so weak in the back. It breaks my heart to see a young, healthy dog like that swimming and unable, completely unable to use his back legs. Left on their own for a few days, Robin and Maddie are doing their best to keep up with the training. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's go. Let's go in the house. Come on. Bringing the dogs into the front door is just like we never had the static mat. They cross with no problems. For the first time, swimming with Guinness has become a calming, relaxing experience. Guinness is really loving the pool training. I think he feels a lot calmer in the pool. That's a good boy. It's my party and I'm loving it. This is great. We definitely are enjoying it, even when it's just the family, but this is the first time we've had friends over. This is what it should be. Your dog's hanging out over there and being happy. You guys having guests here being happy. Guests are in no danger because you're not going to have Guinness coming over here and trying to drown people. This is the first time I've actually been in a pool without being completely bruised and scratched and mauled. It's great to be able to see everybody having a good time by the pool. Guinness and Jovi were incredible. They did not have to be removed once because of barking, even though people were in the pool making noise. That was a great result. I want you to enjoy your pool. It's summertime. Have guest rounds, have parties, chill out, and have your dogs part of it, but not being a bad part, being a good part of it. Great. OK? This was a really awesome experience. It was great meeting Victoria, and we learned a lot. I'm going to leave you to your party now. And I just want to say it's been a real pleasure working with you. Thank you. It's been priceless. Thank you. I really hope Maddie and Robin keep working at it because in the end, their dogs are going to be much better for it. And their lives and their summer and their pool parties are going to be much, much better because of it too. Since Victoria's been gone, um, it's been going great. We're really working together. Great. The dogs are doing awesome. And the house is much more peaceful. Hi. I'm so glad that Maddie and Robin are finally working together as a team and getting the results they wanted. The pool therapy's going really well with Guinness. Come on. Guinness has lost a few pounds, and we're confident that he will lose more weight as time goes on. Look at Guinness go. It's so great to know that Maddie and Robin were able to come together and make life better for themselves and their dogs. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.